Hey guys, welcome to the Animation Movies Recapped. This is David with you. In today's video I will be going through a computer animated science fiction film called Escape from Planet Earth, released in 2013. I like the movie very much and hope you will like too. So without any further ado let's start with the recap. The movie begins with an alien called Scorch running recklessly, it gives us a closer perspective of Scorch being a troublesome person. To explain his personality, the movie goes back in time to where it started. In a baby rescue mission on planet Narlark, he's being assisted by his nerdy brother Gary Supernova, who works in mission supervision. Gary tells his brother not to wake the Narlark during the mission, but Scorch is adamant and even decides to take a selfie with the Narlarks. The Narlarks are revealed to be scary, slimy, and stinky. Scorch then identifies a spacecraft where the babies might be, who he is meant to rescue. His brother, Gary, pleads him to move with caution so that the Narlarks don't get awakened. But a typical Scorch decides to approach the situation with style. He goes inside the spacecraft, but he's surprised as he couldn't find the babies. He begins to cry at first, but Gary tells him that they are right behind him. He veers around as he sees the babies. He begins to play with the babies as he calls them to be cute and magical. James Bing, Gary's remote assistant, then suggests that they don't make a lot of noise and deliver the baby discreetly, so Scorch won't wake the Narlachs. Gary tries to warn him too but he continues playing with the children. This made the Narlarks wake up from their slumber as they attacked Scorch who ran with the babies attached to him. He complains to Gary that he thought there were only 12 Narlark. But Gary tells him that he always reminded him that they were 1200 Narlarks but he never paid attention. He solicits help from his brother as Gary helped him to deploy a grappling hook that enables him to cross a bridge, hereby escaping the Narlarks. He celebrates his victory and praises himself as he escapes the scary creatures. Back at Planet Bob, Gary could be seen with his little boy who loves playing around with space equipment. Just then Scorch arrives with the spaceship on the planet, Gary helps him prepare for landing as the crowd cheers on Scorch for his heroics. Just then, Gary's boss, Lena, contacts him. She tells Gary that they received an SOS call from an uncharted part of the galaxy, and he should prepare for Scorch's next mission. Gary inquired to know where they will be headed to. She tells him that they are going to the Dark Planet. He was confused because nobody has survived the Dark Planet but she sticks to her words saying that they will be leaving in an hour. Gary wasn't much excited as his son, so he proceeded to go look for Scorch to tell him the bad news. Surprisingly, Scorch was already taking interviews concerning the mission. He told his people that they had assigned him to the Dark Planet, the place where nobody comes back alive, but they shouldn't be afraid because he is going to come back victorious. Gary tries to stop him from taking more interviews, but Scorch is already hyped for this mission so he tells Gary not to worry too much. He talks about his sponsorships which made Gary furious. He tells Scorch to think it through and that they shouldn't rush things. Gary tells him that if he goes out now he wouldn't be able to help him. Scorch then deceives Gary, he tells him to organize things with the rest of the team. Meanwhile, he plans to start up the ship without Gary's consent and then proceed with the mission. They prepare to start up the spaceship while Gary goes on to the control room to gather information concerning the Dark Planet. The results reveal the planet to be a strange and terrifying environment and not a single person has returned from the Dark Planet. A terrified Gary then sees his little boy Skipper binding with his uncle Scorch. He tells his uncle that mission control is boring and he wants to be an astronaut just like him. Scorch then takes Kipper on training with a blast tape. Their moment is ruined when Gary rebukes Kipper for training with a blast tape. During an argument with Scorch, he notices that the ship had been set up and that in 30 minutes it will take off. He goes over to meet his boss saying that she shouldn't send Scorch on the mission as it is very dangerous but she tells him nobody cares what he thinks and he shouldn't worry because Scorch has done these kinds of missions before. Gary tries to explain that they participated on all the mission together as a team. But Scorch denies him saying that he was only ruling over him from the control room, while he was out there taking all the risks. The two then engaged in an argument, Gary tells him that he is going to quit and he should go on the macho mission all alone, without his help. In the next scene, a sad Gary returns home with his son Kipper, he explains to his wife, Kira what transpired between him and Scorch, but she tells him that he has to figure out the problem and work on fixing themselves. Just then he sees a group picture of him and Scorch, so he became emotional. His son notices that he was staring into a picture but Gary quickly covers up saying he is trying to work on an old robot boot. Kipper then plays with the boot as he mistakenly hits a button that enabled the boot to fly all around the house destroying their properties. 
On the news, Gabby, the reporter, tells us that Scorch is about to go investigate an intergalactic dark planet. The focus then switches to Scorch on the dark planet. A spirited Kipper then wishes to be like his uncle someday. On the dark planet, Scorch uses a remote cam to carry along the people of Bob on his rescue mission. As he got there, he sees a light shining from afar and then proceeds to go check it out, although Gary thinks it was a bad idea. When he got there, he sees a 7-Eleven store and proceeds to save the mannequin outside the store. In the process, he is captured by the US Army. The general destroys the live cam as he welcomes Scorch to Earth. Everyone on Planet Bob became terrified after they noticed that the live feed has been cut off. Kipper then pressures his father to go rescue Scorch as he was his favorite uncle, but Gary was only interested in making distress calls. This makes Kipper upset and he storms out into his room. Later that night, he goes over to Kipper's room to apologize. He tells Kipper that he will do everything in his power to bring back his uncle, but soon he noticed that Kipper had escaped through the window leaving only the family dog with them. He informs his wife about Kipper's disappearance as the two use his malfunctioning robot boots to rush over to Bossa, where Gary works, in a bid to stop Kipper from running away. When they got there, they see Kipper in a spaceship preparing to launch for takeoff, but they are lucky enough to stop the launch sequence. Gary has a change of heart then decides to re-engage the launch. He tells his wife that he has to go rescue Scorch because it is the right thing to do, so he proceeds with the spaceship to the planet Earth. Kira goes over to meet Gary's boss Lena. She asks her for help, saying Gary had traveled to the Dark Planet. Lena then responds reluctantly saying she will send in contacts to have him, but Kira needs her to send people immediately. But to her surprise, Lena avoids any further conversation with her and leaves. Meanwhile, Gary crashes on Area 51, where his spaceship self-destructs. He then proceeds to go into hiding as he isn't familiar with the environment. On the other hand, Scorch regains consciousness but he notices that the General is trying to disassemble his suit. The General finds Blubonium which is 10,000 times more powerful than atomic energy. Scorch tries to struggle, but they put him back to sleep. The scene switches to two storekeepers working in a store near Area 51. They talk about the blue alien that they came across recently. Just as they were talking, Gary walks into the store, they were all terrified of each other and proceeds to hide, but one of the storekeepers decided to offer him a treat. As Gary finished eating, he is captured by the US Army who then takes him to Area 51. As they got there, Gary goes through a basic etiquette session on humans. After the session, they examine his brain and then discover that he is a brainiac. Gary is then taken to the general's office. The general is revealed to be Shanker. Shanker tells him that he could his brain power for an upcoming project. He commends him on the suit he assembled, but then puts a lock on his neck, saying he only leaves when his project is completed without a hitch. Shanker then asks his men to leave with Gary after he receives an incoming buzz from Lena. Shanker then hurriedly arranges his office with burning candles and beautiful paintings. Lena is uncovered to be Shanker's girlfriend. They exchange pleasantries, but she notices his mood wasn't good. He tells her that the Blubonium she has sent via Scorch computerized suit isn't enough, and he needs more to rule the galaxy. She assures him that more is coming and he shouldn't worry because they will rule the world together. Gary is placed in a cell, he meets up with his cellmate Thurman, who is always slimy. During a discussion where Gary complains that the cell isn't comfortable, Doc a mouse-like alien then chips into the conversation saying he is in Area 51 and he isn't supposed to get comfortable. The noise attracts a cyclops-like alien named Eo, who has anger issues but always tries to control herself by sticking to the program. Doc tells Gary that Shanker lures the smartest alien from around the world and then uses their intelligence to help complete his projects. Thurman who was a professor had invented the touchscreen technology, and Eo who used to be a librarian got so tired of looking up stuff for people, so she invented the search engine. While he invented social networking after his radio show became famous, Gary wasn't interested in all the history as he just needed to see his brother. Just then the alarm buzzed for lunchtime. As they proceed to go eat, Gary hears a loud snore and then quickly identifies it to be Scorch's. He goes over to meet Scorch, but the two ended up in another argument. Meanwhile, back at Planet Bob, Kira and Kipper sneak into Bossa to find a way they would reach out to Gary but soon discovers that the spaceship he entered had self-destruct. After seeing footage from Gary's mission, they discover that someone else might have given the command to self-destruct. However, at one point they are caught up when Lena enters the lab with his men. Lena captures Kira but Kipper manages to escape. She tells Kira of her plans to give Shanker an endless supply of Blubonium, the most powerful energy substance in the galaxy. 
back on Earth, when Gary and his alien friends proceed to have lunch, he got into another argument with Scorch. Scorch calls him a coward, saying he does all the heroics and one day Kip was going to be just like him and not his dumb father. This made Gary angry and they engaged in a food fight, the fight became intense and the others had to join in. They took out the majority of guards, after noticing they had created a diversion. Gary and Scorch then proceed to escape using one of the guards' cards. Unfortunately, they are caught by Shanker who tells them to report to the Peace Shield. The Peace Shield is a giant astronaut gun Doc and his friends had been working on for 10 years. They just needed one power source according to Doc and then Shanker will set them free. On the other hand, Lena takes Kira to a chamber where she holds her captive. She tells her that with Scorch and Gary gone, nobody will be able to rescue her. Just then Kipper attacks Lena's soldier but he was no match for them. They capture him also and then locked him together with his mother. At the peace shield, Shanker arrives with his soldiers. He tells them that the last piece of the puzzle has arrived, as he brings out the Blubonium. Gary was shocked because he could only get it from their planet. Scorch then tells him that someone smuggled it into his robotic suit. Shanker then prepares for his test firing. They test the reactor as it blasts a comet, realizing that their reactor worked and they would be going home soon. They began to celebrate their victory but Gary and Scorch weren't happy because they knew the reactor could destroy a planet. Scorch who loves taking action then proceeds to steal the reactor amidst the celebration. Shanker noticed this and then orders his soldiers to capture him. Scorch easily defeats all his soldiers as he destroys the reactor. Shanker then used his aliens to capture both Scorch and Gary. He tells the rest of the aliens that if they don't fix the reactor they won't be going back home. Shanker then locks up Scorch in a freezing chamber. He orders Gary to fix the Blubonium or he won't see his brother again. Gary is then brought back to the group. They were annoyed at him because of the stunt he pulled with his brother. He explains to them that if he fixes the Blubonium, Shanker can use it to destroy any planet he wishes to destroy. However, the aliens who were out of options then ask Gary for help, since none of them trust Shanker. But Gary does not respond which makes the crew furious, so they proceed to fix the Blubonium themselves. With little or no information, the crew couldn't fix the Blubonium. Gary walks in and tells them to step away from the Blubonium as he was going to fix it. They doubted him at first but he tells them not to worry cause he is the most intelligent person on his planet. Gary can fix the reactor, the crew rejoices as they would be finally free. Gary then goes over to Shanker, he tells him that he had fixed the reactor and he should release his brother from the freezing chamber. Shanker then shows him the multiple supplies of Blubonium. He tells Gary that he will use the Blubonium to destroy all alien planets with intelligent life on them. He then tells Gary about an incident in which three grey aliens traveling with a spaceship accidentally killed his father, who was stargazing back in 1947. Ever since then he has promised to take down all aliens' life. He goes on to make a video call with Lena. Gary is surprised to hear that Shanker is Lena's fiance. He sees that Lena had captured his wife and son. He tries to tell Lena that Shanker is just trying to use her but Shanker ends the call immediately. Gary tells Shanker that if he destroys every intelligent life in the sky, there would be no more stars, but Shanker replies by saying he is no longer interested in stars. Shanker then captures Gary, goes back on his deal, and then locks him up in the freezing chamber. Gary then apologizes to his brother and he freezes. Meanwhile, Kipper saves Kira using a blast tape. It is then revealed that his initial plan was for him to get caught so he can rescue his mother. They blast off the guards as they escape from the cell. Kira then tells Kip to proceed to the mission control while she tries to stop the ship. Shanker gathers all his soldiers. He then reveals that Earth's biggest threat is aliens. The aliens then realized his true intentions as he prepares to destroy Planet Bob. They tried to stop him but he attacks them. As he presses the button to destroy Planet Bob, the extractor began to malfunction. Shanker tries to fix it but it ends up destroying the peace shield. In the process released all the frozen aliens, including Gary and Scorch. The aliens noticing that they are free, then fight off Shanker soldiers as they proceed to go save Gary and Scorch. They escape Shanker's soldiers and then find their way out of Area 51. Meanwhile, back on Planet Bob, Shanker tells Lena that if she doesn't deliver the Blubonium it will be over for them. Kira meets up with Lena, she tells her that Shanker is just using her to get to them and she should have a change of heart. But Lena remains adamant and then proceeds to send the Blubonium. Kira fights her off and then return the course to Planet Bob. Later on, Scorch and his friends are able to locate his spaceship. They proceed to leave Earth for Planet Bob. The US Air Force jets then tracks down Scorch's ship, but Kip leads the way and manages to escape and demolish the jets. 
However, Shanker, using Scorch's robotic suit which he made some modifications on, uses a tractor beam to stop the spaceship in mid-air. With no other option, Gary, followed by Scorch, jumps out of the ship. They attack Shanker and manage to strip the suit off him. This forces them all to descend. While they are on air, Scorch and Gary reconcile before they are rescued by the Grey Aliens, who earlier aided Shanker due to their regret of causing his father's death back in 1974 but now turn against him after discovering his true intentions. After Gary takes out Shanker, the Grey Aliens carry him away. Scorch and Gary then return to Planet Bob where they reunite with Kira and Kipper. Scorch is then celebrated for his heroics, but then he gives all the praise to his brother. He goes on to marry his longtime crush, Gabby the news anchor. He makes Gary his best man as they lived happily ever after. This is where the movie ends. See you soon with a new movie recap. Till then, stay happy and chill out.